Jesus is a Jew. The servant is a Greek. You can imagine the conflict now among the people at the time. But love of humanhood and manhood and beinghood is going to predominate. He goes, and yet in his own consciousness, he doesn't want the man Jesus to come to his house for the fear of his own countrymen. You see, what a weirdo you are. What are you going to listen to Jewish or shaman or something to help that Greek? But when he arrives, it's the conversation that sets up the kinesiology and the consciousness of how things do work at the subtle level. Don't come to my house if you but say the word. The word is a very important function between all life forms. If you but say the word, my servant will be with. It is the remark that the realized man makes that make those who understand the subtle functions of the inner laws of physics realize what really is going on versus being carried away by the magic of it. Not in all Israel have I seen such hate. It can be taken from the normal genealogical environment that the people were Israelites. And they couldn't generate such conviction as to the subtle mechanics of life. And suddenly this Roman comes along and has this comprehension. From that viewpoint, we can assume that's what is the impact of the message. It's more than that. Go, it's done. That's all that matters with the cause. But let us look at it in a deeper aspect of the physics. Not in all the reality of the isness state have there been any form that breeds in the unified field that generates a conviction to the source of its origin until now to confront the Christ principle locked up in that form as a request to insulate it against the feedback of the five senses of the sick person that is going to be imposed or abused or criticized by the surrounding community. Here you go ask this shaman to come to your house. Now you're going to have this brief. All these are interplays of the biological fears. But then at that subtle level, you see someone is emphasizing a greater reality of the truth. That when we break past all the out of show and look at the atomic physics, we get to the core. The core is done. This is kinesiology right now. And you can demonstrate that very simple. Um, last night we had the ex experiment at the friend's house there where we were. And we put an object in the hand and we give a message and then the rest of the object goes down and goes up. If you ever see kinesiology in work, most chiropractors will use it. It's a very simple principle. But it's a connectedness of the consciousness in that way. He is healing another individual at a distance by the mere command of the word. Now, three things are happening. At the atomic level, the servant is healed because he has identified with his Christ nature as a winning principle. And he's looking at the winning principle in the servant at the atomic level. So the two force fields are bonding there. The <coughs> second principle at work is the requester who is asking for the help <coughs> for the one who is concerned of the sick. He's hearing the promise and his biological mechanism is working to fulfill the obligation. So there we have another kinesiological law at work. So thanks, I'm glad you said that. I can go back and tell my friend he's well. But many times around, he meets his own people say, don't go bother that man, your servant is well. I said, oh, when did it happen? He didn't say how it happened. He said, when? When is time? How would mean what method? 
he was concerned with what method. He was concerned when. And when they said when, it clicked again at the subtle atomic physics that the time lapse of the love has no limitation between forms. And as you emphasize it and reinforce it constantly, you phase down the feedback of the fears of the biology in the process of the race to become form. But you have this as a natural condition. You have these fears that are valid for you because they do force you to develop greater senses of immunity. They do force you to different challenges. And without them, you don't have anything to develop a challenge. You wouldn't know what it is to feel weak. You would be like the leopard who doesn't know what pain is and go lift up a burning stove, and burn himself up and then don't need no skin. That's what happened to lepers. They, they hurt themselves more because their skin doesn't register pain. Because pain is a necessary ingredient to stimulate respect. And again, higher immunity. So all the apparent conditions of people seeming to do things when you realize what they are doing it from and what level you see why you have to forgive them. And it's in this process of love and forgiveness, the very thing they are doing turns around to heal them. You're not actually uh, inhibiting the effect of their negativeness upon you, though they may believe they're generating some negativeness <coughs> to get advantage of you. Their physiological makeup starts the healing process of facing down the fear of being a loser and generating the reality of their willingness to survive. So they are cured right there, or healed right there in their own mechanism of whatever is fearsome to them, or whatever they think they bring fearful to you starts to phase off. They don't feel to bother you no more. They accept you for what you are, you are, you accept them. And they are puzzled, how did it happen? But where did we generate anger for each other? Why did we generate? They start questioning themselves. And before you know it, they may turn out to be a best friend in the end. The very people who turn out to or feel that are generating a hurt towards you sometimes tend not to be a best friend too. It is when you understand how to structure this up that you can create this uh, release for them and the sub atomic level. There are no miracles in the true sense of the world. It's a miracle that you're a winner. <laughs> but the fact is that there you have the real source of your price into the world. So anytime you're feeling depressed and uh, wondering if people are doing new things or they're not really doing the power of the love generally to whoever it is, so Yogananda was asked to give a prayer to resolve this peculiar type of biopsychological behavior of mankind. And this was the prayer he gave. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Saints and Sages of all religions and angelic hosts, elemental forces, free our lives from all obstacles and bless us with material mental and spiritual form. We have no condemnation for nobody and we offer insulation to everybody and liberation to everybody. Because that was the prayer he used to reinforce the in part of the
Scriptures are very symbolic language. It writes from the ideation of a realm of purity of abstract thought. And until we can think in that way, we're going to be carried away thinking like children. Adam really is the atom. The protonic nature. And the rib, he was made from the rib, electron. It spins out from the rim. It makes an orbit. The ear came from the rim, rather. When you split the atom, you see, for the first time, the rib action. So I said the ribs are like this. Never see your ribs? How they look? This orbital pattern of the electron spins around the proton to form the atom. And we don't live in an atmosphere, we live in an atom sphere. All around us is atom. And we are an image. That means this physical frame is an actual image of the cosmic sun and light called God, pure light. The sound and light are the two forces. Light is the passive force, and sound is the active force. So God, the Father, is the active force. Sound. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt in man. So the proton always carries the sound in it. And the electron carries the light in it. It's the light in the electron you see that causes all this vast panorama here. So that's the yin yang of the Chinese philosophy. Too. Same principle. We haven't learned anything new. Scriptures are very, very scientific and very accurate. It's amazing how we 
didn't know how to read it, I could be supported. But now we're seeing it. And we refer to Adam in Catman. We're actually referring to the, the concept of the atom. And God is pure light or pure light. This is the neutron that split the atom. That's why they say there's no condemnation of God. God is in his creation, he's outside his creation. The neutron is in the atom, yet the neutron splits the atom. And it still takes intelligence to beam the neutron to do it. And bombard it to split. That means the neutron triggers intelligibility to other forms of life to recognize this relationship. The God in us triggers the God in other people to recognize the God in everybody. That's what it really means. The God in me loves the God in you, and the God in me sees the God in you, and I don't see you. What do I see? God. Right. So all is God. Not all is becoming God. It's God has become all. The neutron is all. This neutron is Now when you meditate, you do look at a point between your eyebrows. And this is why you said when the eyes are single, the whole body is full of light. The electron is busy flapping around inside in the cells. It's in there. But when my eyes are single, two eyes focusing at one. And we're looking at the light, which is the electron. And the light is shining in the darkness. That's in the desire nature. Or the cohesive condition of the atom. But the darkness comprehends it not. That means within this cohesive force, like a cement, that holds everything together. There is no comprehension going on. It's only observation. So a part of you is observing me, and a part of you is comprehending me, and a part of you is doubting me. And the part, that part that is doubting me is already doubting you. You see? Because you don't believe what you're hearing, even though you hear it. That's the doubter. That's the darkness. That part that doubts what it hears and doubts what it thinks it heard, or what it's hearing. There is that portion in you. That's what they call the darkness. Satan, or the adversary, the centrifugal energy is pulled out. So when the scientists split the atom, they find that part of the atom, there is always a certain loss. You don't get that all. Something has gone someplace. Where is that? No one knows. If you were to say you had six pounds of material and it's split and all were exposed into a container and you weigh the container after, a half ounce is gone somewhere it didn't go the container. Just a little portion went out of the container, but how did it get out of the container? There's no way to get out of the container. They don't know where it goes. Now we sing a chant. It is very obvious of this situation. Who is in my temple? Who is in my temple? This is the body. All the doors do open by themselves. That's the end of the land. All the lights go on by themselves. That's the energy inside the land. And darkness, like a dark bird, flies away, flies away. You are automatically triggering in meditation an atomic reaction in the spinal column. You are a living atomic reactor. You are doing exactly what the creator set up in this universe. By that same process of internal meditation and watching inside, you are starting the process of spiritual evolution, or spiritual expansion. You are speeding up your spiritual growth, the spiritual transformation of the body cell. The meditation is to help you to realize God all the time, that He is inside of you not outside of you. And the process is to center. So darkness comprehends it not. Well, let the light so shine before men. See, he didn't say animals, he didn't say birds, he didn't say trees. 
Again, the light must shine with the exact replica of you, man. Because man is the only vehicle that this principle is in residence and is comprehended and realized. There is no other vehicle that is designed for the comprehension and the realization. So every time one individual makes the journey inward to this point of realization of pure light, now the atomic structure is set up. That one individual becomes a light to the world. While I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. You see me, you see the Father. That is the realization of breaking through from the electron level to the proton level from the light level to the sound level. Because automatically that you see the light inside and you start the good work, what the good work means, your daily discipline, your daily action, step by step, long as you only begin with the first step, all these ideas mean the same thing. Discipline of drop by drop, fill the bucket. A little at a time, you constantly will, the light will open up and you will hear the sound current inside, the actual sound that the proton is making now. This is moving, it's not stationary, therefore it is setting off waves. And the waves are music set to the octave. The whole universe is a musical octave. And you can hear it inside and you are dying to identify it. Now, it is there in the octave you begin to realize what is called the Christ or the Son of God, not S-O-N, the Son of God, the true light of God embodied in the proton. There the sun current goes on. There the actual seed, the actual kernel of your true nature. You are that. You are a child of God. You are a son in God. That's why I said, know ye not that you are God, know ye not that you are the Son, the actual light, the actual protank force, the actual general principle that is causing this universe to vibrate or exist. But realization is the whole journey. And you must make this realization via a human body, not outside of the human body, always inside of the human body. There are two lessons to learn while we make the journey with the human body. One, the journey is humility by ethical living. Two, the journey is the transformation of the animal body or corruptive body or decaying body at death into a non-corruptive body or a non-decayable body at death, a body that will dematerialize or materialize by divine law, like the butterfly that comes out from the caterpillar. When it spins its cocoon and then emerge, fully realized. Different species and far more beautiful than anything that can fly. And don't decay. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a rotten butterfly? They're all perfect. There's no way for them to break down. This is the evidence that the whole atomic structure is set for our spiritual journey. Now to him that will overcome it, I will not say for a second time, you will not have to reincarnate this again if you overcome the physical body. But I will make you a pillar that is an actual fixture in the atomic structure, in the house of the Lord, the, the creation itself. You will be a reality of it. You will be an expression of this reality. When this body has thrown out corruption, and taking on non-corruption, it's a glory unto the Lord. It's the same principle we're saying again. When we drop off the relationship of the electron and become involved with the proton itself, we begin to make transformations in the body cells. Now you often hear, you got to have protein. Protein is the building block of the body. And where do protein come from? Sun. It comes from the sun. The animals get it from plants, plants get it from the sun. Man originally got it from the sun too. He is a protonic nature. Therefore, it is written that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mother God. It is known as an evidence of science. 
but man drew his energy into his mechanism via the medulla oblongata, which is known as the mother god in the ancient times, and trapped it like a plant does and convert the chloroplast into pure energy, which you call chlorophyll of blood, plasma. Man had that ability at one time, but lost it. When man became engrossed with the electron, and the proton got more and more involved with the electron, then you find that man's body is comprised of 16 elements out of 144 elements in the universe. His body would not gravitate to more than 16. It's a very unique way to look at it. 16 when the other class is 7. That's how many times men fell. So half the body is. Our scriptures only say one, but the Lord knows we fell several times. There's more evidence of man falling than just one. The atomic physics will verify in time how many times man fell away from his protonic pure nature into his electron nature, which is the Eve nature or the red like action and therefore lost his divinity more and more, acquiring bodies only of 16 chemical elements. In time, as we travel into space and carry our own life support system, we will make body or produce body with less and less minerals as we evolve. The higher evolved beings in the universe have less minerals for their body. Thus, they are able to travel through space much easier without being interrupted by the thought wave that are generated through negative thinking. Our bodies are now going through a change and it's affected by negative thinking, so we have stress. The more we change our environment and improve upon ourselves and refine ourselves, the more this body will start depending upon direct energy. And less and less on solids and liquids. You'll find young people more and more eat less. When they're born, they want less. And elderly people are so. There's a curve between little when you're young eating less and when you're adult uh, eating less. And in between is the maximum time when they gorge yourself. Between the uh, teenager period to 40 or 50, that's the gorge period. <laughs> but then after that, it's tapering off. You're getting more energy with less input. Just as much when you're coming in, there's more energy and less input. If you were to live simply on milk that a baby takes in and move around, the amount of times that a baby moves around, fantastic amount of energy. You ever try keeping up with a baby? How many can have a child around for an hour or two? <laughs> they will keep you running because their platonic energy is active. So the same thing is true with us. Now, the meditation is a technique and a process. It's not a goal. It's a process specially designed by the creative intelligence for the purpose of conservation, not dissipation of this energy. And the advanced approach of conservation is to learn to shut it down, learn to appreciate solitude, learn to appreciate inactivity so that the body will have a chance to recycle itself, recharge itself, revitalize itself. Now we do this when we are asleep, but yet, when you are asleep and you wake up, what is more important, the waking up or the long period of sleep? When you wake up, you start feeling good, right? Mm -hmm. And then you suddenly say, I got so much step. Really? This is only a reinforced thought pattern of getting up. When we measure this condition, all during sleep, you will be most tired individual there is on the bed. <laughs> That's scientifically true. We have measured the individual from the sleep on the bed, and he's far more tired than if he was browsing around, walking around. And because he knows he has to get up at a certain time to have a certain commitment, I've got to get to school at 8 o'clock, i got to be in the office at 8 o'clock, there comes this spurt of energy coming right up from nowhere, and here you're feeling good, and you take a shower, and you're ready to go. So that now, the disciples were criticized for falling asleep when they were meditating by Jesus. He told them, spirit is willing, flesh is weak. They got the spirit and the urge to keep alive with him, but the flesh, the same bodily structure, wanted to taper off. Now, we can learn from this. This is where our great lesson of evaluation comes in. 
We don't have to repeat the mistake they made of sitting down and drifting out into nebulous regions of the mind, or drifting out into conditions of extra tiredness. We can utilize the feeling of waking up from sleep and transfer this now into a conscious sleep. So here you are consciously and you're going to close the eyes and try to recapture the feeling of wake up. This is conservation of energy and at the same time it is perfect receptivity and total muscular relaxation. We have come a long way to embody it. The ancient saints knew this all the time. They discovered this after long series of self purification meaning that they discovered it after they cleaned up their selves and learned to keep their mind from distractions. Today we have all this available to us now. We can just sit down and call back that thought pattern and reinforce it, reinforce that feeling. Now try it. Okay. Before we try it, let's get up and stretch your legs. And in doing that, I want you to put your feet together. That's right. Get the toes touching each other together. Keep the spine straight. Keep the neck straight. That's I guess you're standing at the military attention. And then take their hands and turn them out, keeping the fingers together. Same way as you got your feet out. You're just duplicating what the foot is doing. Keep them in the same position, turned out. Keep the elbows in to the side. Again, that's the idea. You'll feel now how much more energy is flowing. You're already waking up. See? You hold it for the count of 15. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 
So we can't think of it as being specifically alone. It's very spiritual alone. Thank you. Thank you. They look at each other, and he said to her, What are you doing here? And she says, I work here. And he kept his mouth shut, and he ordered the car, and she walked away. And then he look at me, and I suspect already, wait a minute. I said, well, You got something in your mind you want to tell about the woman, the waitress? He said, The damn woman, that woman has a whole pile of degrees behind her, and got, I have to go through some of those same scholarships. And if you know which degree she's got, I will be the she for me she's working on a little bit. That's a low profile. I say yes, uh, maybe someday when she's ready to move on to be her own boss. Then all those labels will be her uh, presentation for her. Better keep her on her own business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the only reason she's doing that is because she's getting those two little uh, jerkies getting ready for their 18 year birthday to see them to stand up on their own two feet. See, her husband died in the war and she had the kids and her husband to do to go to work and to her, so she didn't want to get married. She, Working at the school at night, working at the school. Fed the kids. So they're already 18 now, ready to another high school. They don't, they don't even know their mom goes to school at night. All they know, mom works at a restaurant. And she feeds them. Mm-hmm. And she feeds them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're graduating. But, and they're all graduated and they're on their own. And I know her psychology is. She'll be working for herself. But that's what I call low profile. It's amazing. Some people know how to do it naturally. Go home and stop bugging the door. You've had a bad beak this week. You heard him. <laughs> yeah, well, he's then try to face the wood. <laughs> he's had a taste. You can go. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a real time with animals lately. One cat throwing up. One cat not using the litter box, using the carpet instead. And well, they got they got to harass you. <laughs> At what point did your responsibility end? I mean, you took them on, you accepted the responsibility of this creature, and you obviously are paying back for something that you owe them. Do you have to see it through to the end? That's what I felt no, up to learn. it's up to you to say, well, you know some other place you want to go to, be my guest. You've had to share here, go on to some other place. But... So animals leave homes and go other places, you know. Mm-hmm. As long as you have comforting, they stay. As long as you tell them go, then, and they have their share of comforting, they'll go. Well, we've mentally released them both. Mm-hmm. If you've finished, or if we've finished what we had to do, you're yeah. released. I'll have a little meditation. Look at me.